Hey guys, what it is? It is your girl Cadillac. I am Cadillac Dixon. I'm the Draw My Life Prison Wife. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice, hoping to see justice before all face to black. Yeah, it's your girl Cadillac. Did you guys miss me? I know you did. Of course you did. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. So you guys know I like to play, whatever. Um, but anyways, what's going on? It is about two, two more months before me and Mr. Jackson are officially grandparents. Yes, baby girl got about two more months. Um, yeah, it's like I was hoping, like hoping. <laughs> Ooh that I can get him home before, you know, she could, you know, you know, before she had her baby. But yeah, so mission failed. So you know that I have been fighting for Marcello since, basically since he left in 2002. And it's almost coming up on 20 year since he actually lost trial trial was the week before easter um i do have a video about how marcella went out to get her by her little easter dress he was so excited and next thing you know he was gone he didn't even get to see her in it but that'll be in the description box but um yeah so I've been trying for a long time to get Marcello out, but it wasn't until 2005, like to break his story, you know, because I once, I think once the world hears his story, there's no way people wouldn't be like, just free him, just free Marcello Jackson, like for real, like every other movement in this world, like if they were actually if this story was heard because when I do tell people, they're, they're like, like, no, he needs to be home. Like, that's crazy. Like. He's done enough time. Mind you, he's done 20 years in prison for something that he did not do. And there is no evidence that he did anything. And to be honest with you, the crime that they put him down for never even happened. It didn't even happen. These are bogus A charges, but they got him. It, it can stick. They can make it stick because we don't really have a justice system. And unfortunately, when this happens to people, nobody cares. So the people just suffer. It, it, it's basically like being snatched. Like, you know how us was? People were getting snatched. Like, for real. Like, nobody cares. Um, But in 2005, I met Mr. Life Jennings. Oh, my gosh. And he changed my life, for real. I'm being honest with you guys. When I met him... It got me on my grind after he gave me some encouraging words. He was like, hey, yo, you, you with the broken heart, you with the fire art, don't start to you get your heart. <laughs> I know I'm a fool. But anyways, back to the real business. And that's when I started using my artwork to try to break the story of Marcello Jackson. Now, here it is years later, almost 20 years since then. And I have been unsuccessful. I got a, I kind of got my, my, my tail between my legs because I feel so like pie on my face now because I didn't, you know, I didn't succeed. I thought that I would. And people that see me back then, so hopeful that, you know, he was going to come home. Now I'm getting the side eye, like, girl, your crazy, crazy ass thought that you was going to get him home. <laughs> like, anyways, but, um, you know, all I can do is just continue to fight. But let me show you this sketchbook first that I found. I drew this when I was a door greeter at walmart like for real the art the pain my art comes from pain the pain when i worked overnight i had to leave my child because you took my husband out my house so i had to leave my child and work overnight crazy here's the sketchbook i drew all of this remember 
the outlines and stuff while I was door green at Walmart. So this is actually I made a video. I will link that in the description where I did Photoshop all these frames and put it to music. Um, and it's a song called Hold You Down. No matter what goes down, I'm going to be around to hold you down. And I have been. So um, this is Marcello, basically the last, you know, meeting with his public defender, public pretender, should I say, um, before going to trial. And instead of preparing for a trial, he was basically just asking Marcello, are you going to take the plea? And Marcello says no. And he's like, listen, Marcello, I just pretend I was your doctor and you had cancer in your arm. And if you didn't, what if I didn't advise you that you up the cancer and I let you just go head on living and what would happen? You would die. He said, if I didn't tell you, I would be a bad doctor. He said, basically, I'm telling you to cut your arm off you have about a 5% chance of winning. He said, now, are you going to take the plea? And Marcello said, I cannot take the plea for something I did not do. Then he follows up with, well, then kiss your daughter goodbye. And it was goodbye. That was it. That was it. Um, this was us going into the court. Now, the reason I drew out all these frames was because this story is so complex. If I don't, t and it was so hard for me to tell this story. And the thing is, if I didn't tell all the details, then you couldn't understand like how he could be wrongfully convicted. But then when I go and explain everything, nobody would sit and listen that long. So I just didn't know what to do that. I wanted to make it so juvenile that you can clearly understand that I drew it out. And this is actually the people here that are claiming that Marcello did these crimes to them, um, robbed them and all of that stuff. Allegedly, um, they were on the elevator. And me and Marcello were, I was talking to him about something and he was like, Shh, be quiet, that's them. So we get on the elevator with them. And what's so crazy is they never moved from that spot. They were just chilling, lounging or whatever. But they said that they were so deathly afraid of Marcello. So what I didn't understand was, and this was before going into the courtroom, right? So I'm like, how are they so calm around him if they were so deathly afraid that he was going to kill them and stuff and while, you know, robbing them? That didn't make sense. Like, I couldn't ride the elevator. I don't, I'm not going to ride nothing with you if you just, you know what I'm saying? And they just sat there all calmly. And then this is another picture here where... There's the two again. Marcello had to use the restroom before he went into ooh, my nails. Marcello had to use the restroom before he went into the courtroom. So he goes in the bathroom and one of them follows behind him and uses the restroom with him. I'm like, how? Like, I thought they were so deathly afraid of Marcello. Like, that makes no sense. Then I got this one. Uh, this was... Marcello's and I haven't seen this one in so long yes okay I finally found it this one is not part of my um, music video because I could not find this one but this is Marcello's lawyer and this is the prosecutor and what made no sense to me is that they were actually acting as though they were friends like they knew each other and stuff like that um, he was passing her Altoids and all kinds of stuff. They were laughing and joking. And then this was during recess. So imagine it being like a TV show. Oh, my client, my client. No, your client, your client. And then in the middle, they go and they're back together playing, um, passing t Altoids and laughing. And I did view all of this. I'm like, you would think that they know each other outside of, you know what I'm saying? But now at that time, I was only like 20. I didn't know that really prosecutors and public defenders, they all are buddies. The judges, all of them together are buddies and they cut deals behind the scene. They don't need a court, you know, trial to know what's going to happen. And basically that's how he knew that Marcello was going to get convicted because they had already spoke about they were going to convict him. In another video, I will explain this, but baby, 
This is Marcello's lawyer, and this was his sorry defense. Sorry, a defense. All of the stuff that they had, the lack of evidence. How are you charging Marcello Jackson with a weapon and you don't have a weapon? All of the evidence, and he based his whole thing on a smiley face, saying why if someone was about to be robbed and this and that, that at the end of their police report, they would write a smiley face. He based the whole trial on that. He didn't say, oh, they have no evidence on my client. They have no uh, fingerprints on my client. They have no DNA on my, on my client. He based it on a smiley darn face. It's a good cow, Zach. <laughs> <laughs>